Somebody come and welcome here to the Funkit Pod Saturday edition. That's where we talk about higher education and how to level up our teaching and so on, right? And well, this is episode two. So of course, I have to address the elephant in the educational room to some extent, like how to how to innovate teaching, right? Uh, methodologies, how to change your teaching and so on. Well, of course, we have to talk about ed tech education technology, at least a little bit, right? So it's not all about technology, of course, like when it comes to improving your teaching, changing your syllabus and whatnot. It's not all about um, technology, obviously, but it can be a part of it. And given that it's 2023, it might very well be a part of it, right? So that's why I, today I want to talk a little bit about how to utilize technology to to transform your classroom into a little bit more of a dynamic, engaging, maybe even personalized learning environment, if you will. Yeah, so get ready to dive into the wonderful world of education technology with me for the next 10 to 15 minutes, okay? So starting the video today, um, we'll first discuss the importance of technology just a little bit, uh, of technology integration, of course, into the modern classroom and I'm also going to talk a little bit about a few different tech tools that we can utilize. I'm not going to make a list of like best ed tech, I don't know, tools because there are just so many lists out there that you can um, pick the fitting tool from, of course, right? Um, if there is some time left in the video, I might also talk about a case study, but I'm not, not sure yet because I think it's more important to actually understand the concept, just, just as always with teaching, right? It's uh, more important to understand the, 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 the context and maybe even have some practical tips and a few best practices as well to understand how we can utilize education technology to um, yeah, flip not flip to in, improve our teaching. You know, flipping was last week. We're not flipping anything right now. Um, but we will try to look into how to improve the classroom environment with um, technology a little bit. And then in the end, I'm going to have a quick wrap up, of course. And then that's it again. Okay. So let's start, right? I think it goes without saying, I mean, you're using technology right now to watch slash listen to this. So obviously technology is, is a pretty powerful tool. We all know this, right? Um, so why not use it also to enhance student engagement and learning, right? I mean, the students quite likely are exposed to technology anyways all the time, right? Because they choose to do so, uh, because that's how they grow up. Gen Z and younger, they grow up like this, right? So why not utilize that? And there are a few different ways, of course, of how we could do that. Yes, Google Docs is one way, but that's of course, which is already cool. So if you're using Google Docs to collaborate, for example, that's great. Why not? That, that that's cool. Yeah, there are there are other other tools out there that you could use to collaborate, such as Mural, for example, M U R A L, which is a more of an open whiteboard space where then everyone can create their own murals and can put post-its on there, and you can collaborate. So that that's also something you could be doing. But hey, starting with shared documents is already the first step, which is cool. And then, of course, in the classroom, you could be using digital whiteboards if you've got the budget for this, like like smart boards. But oh, what's the name of that? There's this mural thing also from Google. It's called Jamboard. Jamboard is also there, for example, also from Google, which is also then for free if you have a Google account. You, you know it's never really free because they take your data, but you know what I'm saying, right? So you can turn passive presentations into more of an active learning experience, which is cool. And so using those interactive whiteboards kind of like allows students to engage with um, the content that's presented, like physically, maybe even, um, or virtually, right? But that definitely enhances understanding and retention because you have to interact. So if you have a physical smart board, whiteboard, fantastic. If you don't have it, maybe use Jamboard or Mural or something like this, where they still can interact, even just if it's just in a virtual manner. Because, again, because interaction fosters understanding and retention. Okay. Then, of course, I mean, we're all using it, I guess, um, learning management systems, LMS, uh, Canvas, Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, Blackboard, what have you, right? So those digital hubs, of course, they make sense. And you, as you know, you organize assignments there, you offer resources, you can have, you can have exams in there and whatnot. You can give feedback and so on, which is great. 
right? So that, that kind of like helps to streamline the classroom management, I think, and extends learning beyond the classroom. So that's the theory. <laughs> there we have it. Nice. Um, and the thing for me is that I, I always thought, well, it's not really cool, right? So MS Teams is not cool. Canvas looks a little bit nicer, but also definitely not cool. Neither is Blackboard or whatever you're using. M Moodle, <laughs> if anyone is still on Moodle. Um, not cool, but it can, it can have cool applications. And again, what I saying for, from my point of view, right? You really need to spend some time to figure, figuring out like how to, how to configure everything, um, how you can really streamline it for, for, for me, for us, it's like MS Teams that we, that we're using. Um, and so once I really sat down during the break and I figure out like how to streamline everything, like how to, how to make groups, for example, on MS Teams, right? Um, so that, that, that like every group, I can give group feedback, but I can also, of course also give individual, individual feedback and whatnot, kind of group submissions, individual submissions, all those things. So once you really figure out all the intricacies, it helps so much more. It might makes everything so much easier and also more transparent for the students because if you give the feedback and the grades and everything in your LMS, then they get the immediate feedback and they're like, oh, that's where I'm at right now. I don't need to wonder where my grades are coming from and so on. Students will still wonder, of course, at the end, like, oh, I do. why didn't I get an A if my friend got an A? But you have everything on there, right? So, I'm saying, so spend some time with your LMS. You all use LMS anyways, but really spending time and figuring out how it really works and use it to its full extent. Because I think I consider myself as a, as a very tech savvy person, or very tech interested person at least, right? But even I had to be like, okay, I'm going to sit down now and I'm going to figure out how MS Teams really works, for example. Okay, so I think that really makes sense there. You could also then use, um, of course, students, student response systems. I think that's, that's a phrase that's out there. Um, like, and I hate it, but like Kahoot, I, I just hate Kahoot with a passion because it's just so non-customizable. I know it's customizable if you pay for it to some extent, but it's still, you still see it's Kahoot, right? So uh, it's just, uh, but Kahoot, um, there's quizzes, for example, um, there are so many other interactive quizzes out there. Just Google it. Um, so those are interactive ways to maybe even fun ways to assess student understanding in real time so that you can also give feedback in real time. And it then again makes learning hopefully a little bit more engaging also because of this immediate feedback that you're giving, right? So it's not just, hey, do you do this assignment by yourself and then you get some feedback two weeks later or something. You get you see it and you can do it right away, which is cool. And you can even anonymize it if you trust your students not to hijack it, for example. And you can respond to anonymized answers that are popping up right behind you, for example, while you're talking, while you're giving a lecture, for example. This can also lead to some fun, fun um answers of course but again it all depends on like how much you trust your students whether or not they're going to hijack it or if they're going to be with you uh, in 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 that case but it's a lot that can be lots of fun and even if it's not lots of fun it can be way more engaging than just like asking a question waiting for someone to answer and then no one's answering you're like oh come on guys please answer a question at least one and then you just pick that one student that you know who knows the answer everybody else is left behind so that's a fun way to to increase engagement those those live feedback response systems if you will okay um, again, we talked about online collaboration with Google Docs and so on, but there are others, others such as Padlet, of course, which you probably also know because it's quite famous by now. So just facilitate online collaboration. You, you, this doesn't only need to be done in like for homework or assignments or reports or whatever, but you can do this also live in the class, right? If you do like a workshop in the class, for example, of course, you can also emphasize on collaboration and of course... You don't need to just say, hey, you do whatever, uh, work in groups and then show me a result. But maybe you can also introduce like, hey, that's the Padlet right now. That's what we're doing. And if you introduce it, maybe then the likelihood that they, they use it in the right way, in a in a proficient way, um, might actually increase. Okay, so I think that's just something we should all be, all be working on. Um, I mean, I could tell you now about random case studies. Like, for example, like when I researched uh, about this topic... I saw someone, I think his name was 
it sounds like made up, but it's actually a case study um, where it's out there, Dr. Patel. Um, he, I think he used, no, I think I know that he used VR in his class, which is kind of cool. Um, but of course, then you need to have the setup for it, right? But if you have the setup for it, why, why not why not do it? So if you have the budget, if you're a private university, congratulations, and you have all the money in the world, uh, why not use VR, for example, AR? Um, I don't have that much budget, but I have one guest lecturer, for example, who's a VR slash AR artist. And usually when she comes and she, she brings like those, those glasses and everything and the students are so much more involved. It's, it's crazy because they see like all the applications that they can do and how they can apply what they learned right away in a, in a engaging and very immersive manner. So, um, yeah, if you can, like, make it as immersive as possible, right? The time of just a three, two or three hour lecture where you're just standing there talking, those times are over and you can hate it as much as you want, but there's just no turning back. Um, yeah, we, we work with the TikTok generation and it's not going to change. Um, maybe it's going to change for the worse. Um, depending on how you define worse or bad in this case, but you know what I'm saying, right? So you can complain as much as you want. There's no turning back. So live with it and adjust and make the best of it. All right. Um, let me talk about a few, a few tips and best practices, right? And it comes to integrating technology into your teaching, into, into your, your classes. Um, that doesn't need to be daunting. Like even if you're not a high tech person, um, doesn't need to be daunting. There's a few, few easy steps. Like if you start small, right? I always say this now in those videos. I said it last time. I say it this time again, start small. Like just choose one tool that aligns with your teaching goals and then master that tool before moving to the next. That's what I said with MS Teams. Like master that first, master your LMS. And then you move to the next one. Okay. Once you have it mastered, you can move on and try something else. That's, that's what I did, for example, like a long time ago when I, when I started teaching at university. We didn't have MS Teams forever. I, 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 I was the first person at my faculty to use Moodle, for example. And I'm like, I'm going to figure out how to customize Moodle, how to use Moodle and all the things. And mastering Moodle. Help me, of course, also understand other things like FASA, for example, MS Teams now and so on, right? So pick one tool and if it's just the LMS, master that, then you can use it in a way that no one else is using it probably and the students will be very happy about that, okay? So that's very important. So pick one tool, master it. And if that's, if that's just a, a student response tool, a quizzes or something, master it, utilize it, students going to appreciate that because start small. Also, what you should be doing, and now I'm, I'm, I'm teaching, but uh, at least I know you're probably also a teacher, so you understand what, why I'm doing this. So plan purposely, okay, purposefully, I should say. Because the planning, and it's also what I said in the last video, the planning is going to take time, but it's really important, of course. Yeah, so you got to align the tech tool with your learning objectives. Just using a tech tool just because it's cool doesn't do anything. Yeah, if you say, hey, let's do some VR stuff, but it doesn't align with your learning objectives, like why would you do it? It's just a cool gadget, but it distracts from your learning objective. Okay, so the tech tool needs to support your objectives, not distract from it, okay? So important also, that it should enhance the experience, not dictate it, not shouldn't be like, you can only learn something if you master this tool or if you use the tool or something like this. Okay. It shouldn't dictate the class, the learning outcome. It should enhance it. Okay. That's quite important. What I also found kind of crucial is to set some sort of digital etiquette if you want like rules for digital etiquette right so you should establish clear online behavior like like norms and you should reinforce them um because this fosters a safe and respectful communication environment okay and, and learning environment why is it important well because let's be honest people that are online and so on yeah leave comments send messages and, and so on at night so a don't set up assignments, whatever, at night, I think. Um, deadlines, sure, whatever, but uh, you know what I'm saying. Like, don't communicate at night if you don't want students to also send you messages at night, for example, right? Then, of course, yeah, you foster, like, positive um, comments, for example, right? So, 
we, for example, used a tool here, the TikTok for education. Like it looks like TikTok is, is not awesome TikTok, and where students upload short videos and so on, and then comment on each other's work. And of course, you foster like positive comment steps, positive reinforcement, and giving criticism. Yeah, sure, but fair criticism, and not just like this sucks or something like this, right? So, if you foster this, and if you have like a clear etiquette, it's easy to follow. Uh, and then you have hopefully a positive learning environment. So I think that's it's quite important. What I also found important while I'm looking at, at the last few of my notes is um, that you should learn alongside your students. What does it mean? I think you should embrace the journey of learning new tech tools and you can do this together with your students. Yeah, because it shows that it, lifelong learning is actually a thing. So if you say, hey, um, we're going to use this tool, I um, I'm not super professional i know how it works but we're going to use it together again this depends of course on the class setting on the goals yeah if if this if you're not familiar with the tool and then it just distracts from the learning objective of course it's not that's that's not okay um but if it enhances and you're like hey we're gonna figure this out together um uh, then this can be ha can have a positive effect of course because right, the students see, oh, so you're doing something that you're not familiar with. We're doing it together. We're learning it together. Fantastic. And then if you can do it, I can do it, for example. Okay, so why not learn alongside your students? Okay. Okay. Um, I have one more point that I wanted to mention. Oh, yeah, of course. Well, seek feedback. Seek feedback and be ready to adapt. Yeah, so regularly seek, what I said last time too, seek student feedback on the tools that you're using and be open to make changes on the input. Yeah, because I mean, they're your audience in this case. So if they hate something, for example, for some reason, if there's a reason and they can articulate that reason, then you can be like, okay, I understand. You're gonna change something. Or, hey, you like this, you didn't like that, I can adjust. Okay, so ask for honest feedback. So be open for feedback. Of course, ignore the trolls and the people that are always mad at anything, but maybe the actual feedback that you're getting, use this, utilize it to improve on what you're doing all right okay uh again second video in this in this in this season in the season i want to say i don't know if it's a season if i keep it a season if i just keep going um still not add rocket science just yet but we're gonna make it a little bit more rocket science sure every episode yeah so we had to address at ed tech of course it's the elephant in the room when it comes to improving your teaching i believe um, now we've done this. Now I'm very curious to hear how are you using EdTech? Do you use lots of different tools? Do you have one tool? Are you saying, no, technology needs to stay, stay outside the classroom? Because it's also a trend right now, right? So I read lots of papers right now or articles on professors that say, hey, no technology, no phones, no nothing in my lecture. I lecture, you listen. And maybe there's also something to it because it's just so different to what all the students are used to by now. Maybe that's also why it works. What do you think? Let me know in the comments um, on social media. It's at FunkyPod everywhere on social media. Email FunkyPod at gmail.com. If you like this, if you thought it's somewhat helpful, share it with colleagues. It would be cool, of course. Leave a review. That would be fantastic because this really boosts and then more people can find it and then we can have a bigger, hopefully happy, but at least open-minded community. They can, they can exchange ideas. If you have any questions, if you want anything to be addressed or have addressed in particular, shout out. Um, as always, thanks for joining and yeah, let me know your experiences with edu education technology in higher education. Until then, I say thank you. Stay safe. Take care. We talk soon next Saturday. Savadi Kappa.